Now it's time for today's guest. Eva Chin is the director of fashion partnerships at Instagram and an influential voice for women everywhere. She made headlines as the youngest editor-in-chief at a major American fashion magazine and served as the first Asian American in charge of any Condé Nast publication. Now Eva is adding author to her credits with her new book, Juno Valentine and the Magical Shoes. Everyone, please put your hands together for Eva Chin. This is not terrifying at all. <laughs> I'm not gonna have nightmares Seriously, about this. Seriously, would you want your ashes spread at Disney World? I read, I heard yeah, that that's like a secret place that thing. people, I, uh, maybe Chanel, I don't know. Oh, <laughs> I kidding. love it. Um, so here's the book. Yes. How does it feel to see it in person? I know it's probably been oh a labor of love. I'm freaking out about it, yeah. actually. It's funny, I've done like a lot of, I've been fortunate enough to do like many different things in my life, but this is the thing I'm the most nervous about. I feel really? very like, every time I talk about it, I get a little bit of acid reflux. You know when you can feel your heart right here? I can feel my heart like right here when I talk about it. Is it just because you're stepping out of your comfort zone a little bit? I think so. I mean, I think it's like something very different for me that I've never done before. Um, and it's like personal. It's the first time I've done something that's not like something else, mm -hmm. like owned by another company. It's just like pure from my heart. So what is the story about? Because we see the shoes, and we know from yes. your Instagram that you love shoes. I do love me some <laughs> shoes. Yeah. Um, it's Well, I have two kids, and basically I read my kids' books, like literally like 10 to 15 books a day, minimum. Wow. And so for me, I wanted to write a book that's like a little bit of a fashion fairy tale, a little bit of like a feminist, like girl power book. And so it's about a little girl who loses her favorite shoes and then goes on this journey through like space and time to find a new pair of shoes. Hmm. Um, and so she gets to try on shoes from everyone from like Serena Williams to Cleopatra to Frida Kahlo. It's a lot of like girl power icons. I love that. Mm -hmm. Taking that living a day in somebody else's yeah, shoes. Yeah, exactly. She literally. takes a step in someone else's shoes. That's so cool. And spoiler alert, the lesson might be that your own shoes are the best shoes of all. Oh. I'm such a mom. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> that's a good message. Well, uh, will you tell us a little about the Janie and Jack capsule collection? Yeah, yeah. So I have a children, I created a co capsule collection with Janie and Jack, which is one of my kids' favorite brands. And so it's super cute. They're like um, mother-daughter twinning kind of clothes. And there's mm. a lot of gender neutral items as well, because my daughter, who's three, like she doesn't want to wear princess dresses. Yeah. Like for Halloween, she wanted to be a dragon, which is <laughs> like, I think it's cool. So um those are some of the images from the collection. That's the illustrator who did the book, Derek. And so, so cute. that's the one in the middle is like the rock star look kind of inspired by Lady Gaga. My daughter's actually wearing those leggings today. <laughs> and there's like a really cute faux fur coat that like I liked so much that I made it in a grown up size. Yes. So it's like striped faux fur and then with like cargo pants. And the last one is the Frida Kahlo inspired look. That's awesome. And we read that your daughter, Ren, actually has an opinion about what she wears at all times. My daughter has an opinion <laughs> on like, everything. I could be like, what are your thoughts on nuclear physics? And she'll be like, I don't like it. <laughs> Einstein's theory was completely incorrect. Like she literally has an opinion on everything. Were you like that as a child or? No, I was actually like, painfully awkward and shy. Like I had braces until I was 16 years old, if yeah. that gives you a, con or, mm -hmm. no, 17. Literally like uh. I got my braces taken off like two weeks before college, uh. like literally, which I think actually in retrospect might've been like a tactic that my mom used totally. to keep me nerdy. <laughs> and so I had like braces, like unibrow, like I had glasses even though I didn't really need glasses. <laughs> so you had the, you had yeah, the look. it wow. was super, super awkward. Like the only thing I didn't have was like that headgear mm -hmm. kind oh, of yeah. braces, but I had braces for seven years. Wow. Because I like wow. lost my retainer. One year for each tooth. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know like when you lose, when you have braces and then they give you the retainer and they're yeah. like, don't lose it, you have yeah. to wear it all the time. And so like at the cafeteria, I like, had my retainer in like a napkin, which is gross, and then I like threw it out, but then I was too scared to tell my parents. And so when the dentist was like, why are your teeth crooked again? I was like, I lost my retainer. <laughs> so that's so amazing then, knowing this about you now, what you were like in high school, um, <laughs> you, then you were, become the successful person in fashion and like, and clothes and your, your brand now. So what, how did that happen to go from braces at 17 to <laughs> being a fashion editor? I mean, I think for me, it's like, and when I talk to a lot of young people, I do like, you know, and millennials and just anyone who's kind of like getting started in their workplace is like, I think the most important thing is knowing that it's like 
life is a journey. There's no one final destination. Mm -hmm. And what you want to be when you're like 15 or 25 can be very different from what you want to be at 35 or 45. And just know that like if you're doing something and it's like not working for you, if you don't like it, like that's not a failure. You're actually learning about yourself. So when I went to college, I was pre-med. Um, I was terrible at it. Like I was not great at it. Mm -hmm. But then I ended up doing an internship in something wild and crazy just to have fun. And that was magazines. And then I realized that like that was going to be my passion. And I did that for 10 years and then um, had my baby and then um, got a, a job at Instagram. And I think that life can take you to really unexpected places. You just kind of have to be open for the to the experience. Yeah. I love that because even when you started your career, like Instagram didn't exist. So you Instagram don't, did not yeah, exist. So you don't even know where you're going to end up because maybe that opportunity doesn't even exist yet. So that's a really awesome message. Well, people ask me questions like, what was the first DM you sent? Like, what was the blah, blah, blah? And I was like, <laughs> Man, it was like bad. Whatever it was, it was probably embarrassing. But actually, the first Instagram I ever posted was uh, my husband's best friend and his then girlfriend, who have now broken up. Oh. <laughs> yeah, documented forever. Ever, <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah, you have over a million uh, followers on Instagram. Do you have any Instagram tips for us? I would say for Instagram, just keep it real. I think a lot of people feel like Instagram has to be like perfect and like highlights of your life. And like, what I find is that. It's the more authentic stuff is what tends to do better because you have to remember, let's just say you follow 500 people on Instagram. You're following your like best friend. You're following your roommate from college. You're following your coworkers. And so your content is mixed in with like your sister's new baby and blah, blah, blah. So in general, like I think keeping it real is the best thing to do. And then play with Instagram stories because mm. like so many people use it every day. I think it's like 400 million people use right. it every day. And like anything goes on Instagram stories. Don't feel like you have to curate it. Just... Right. Realness. Have and fun. also, like, everyone here sitting at this table, like, lives in New York, which is one of the most Instagrammy cities mm -hmm. in the world. So whether it's, like, cool graffiti that you see on the, on the street or, like, your beautiful avocado toast, <laughs> like, feel, feel just at leisure to post everything. Cool. Do you ever feel pressured or do you still really enjoy the experience? I mean, do you see that I brought my phone? Yeah. Like, it's, it's, like, it's like my security blanket. I don't really feel pressure just because I really, en I truly enjoy yeah. it. Like, even when I was backstage and there's pictures of, like, Chewbacca <laughs> next to Meghan Markle. It's like, I like sharing the things that are happening in my day just because I feel really lucky to live in this cool city and to have this like yeah. life, so. Yeah. One last question about the book. Yeah. After you mentioned all the different shoes she tries on, mm -hmm. whose shoes would you like to wear for a day? I mean, Oprah? Yes. Yeah. I feel like everyone at this table, <laughs> like, Oprah. Oprah I'd wear them like, proudly. Yes. I would like literally <laughs> put on yeah. Oprah shoes. Even if they pinch my feet, I'd wear them all day. Yeah, I would, I would make it work. I would put some insoles in there. I would just like, yeah, Wait. Oprah. And speaking of the Oprah, is there any other, like, we are now the year of the woman. It's yes. a big year, yeah. hopefully in a week yeah. for the, uh, our government. I'm really excited for it. We're praying to God. Everyone vote. <laughs> yeah, yes. vote, please. Vote. Very important. Are vote. there any, like, fe uh, um, female icons right now, fashion icons, or just icon icons in general that you're looking to? I mean, I think that, first of all, like, we all have to kind of rely on the women in our community. Mm -hmm. And in the absence of it being perhaps in the government or in, you know, higher up, like, we have to kind of re rely on our own girl gangs and, like, the women in our community and help build them up and support women in, like, in your own world, whether it's a small business owner or a friend who's doing something cool at her school or, like, a teacher, et cetera. Um, but in the fashion community, I mean, it, there's so many powerful, inspiring women, like Anna Wintour, of mm -hmm. course, Donatella Versace, Diane von Furstenberg. All of them are in my book. <laughs> it's funny with my book, there are a lot, if you love fashion, there are a lot of, like, secret Easter eggs in the book. Like, you can find, like, uh, off-white shoes in there. There's, like, a shout-out to, like, Donatella Versace, Chiara Ferrani. So if you love fashion, you'll love it. But if you don't know anything about fashion, it's just, like, a fun story. Yeah. So, um but I think the most important thing is like for women to support other women. And when you see a woman doing something cool, you have to like take a moment and give them a slow clap <laughs> because like we have to do it. Like we all have to do it together. I love that message of supporting women and especially young women. I love that this is a lot of women are going to read this with their daughters and, yeah. and instill that message very young. So thank you for writing the book. Thank, thank you. you for doing it. Oh, thank you for having me. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank you.